Hello everyone, on today's edition of The Final Bar, we're going to talk market, sort of steadiness, I guess is how I would describe it, but with some nice boosts from small and mid caps, which is actually pretty unusual. We've not seen that for uh, quite a while. Um, my guest Cliff Droke from the Cabot Wealth Network is going to help us think about breadth, something we've talked about, but he's got a couple charts looking at new highs, new lows, which uh, could be very interesting spur our thinking a little bit. Also a focus on commodities. We're going to talk in particular about gold and oil. So ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. Hello, everyone. My name is Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining me today and every day for the final bar. This is our opportunity to take a look at the markets from a technical perspective, connect the short-term movements of, de of today with the long-term trends, just try to make sense, get our head around what's happening here in this bear market environment. It's been a fantastic ride thus far, and the ride is not over yet. You know, this 2350 level that we've been looking at for quite a while continues to be in play yesterday, today. We test it, but go back above it. For the week, we really haven't gone anywhere. It's been essentially sideways, but I think the breadth picture is what can be really uh, compelling. So we're going to talk about you know, looking at advanced decliners, looking at new highs and new lows, trying to just make sense of where we're at relative to where we've been. The question on everyone's mind is, what sort of bottoming pattern are we in? Are we at a bottom? Are we nearing a bottom? What sort of a process is it going to be? Did a YouTube live Q&A earlier. Was it, was it a, a U bottom or an L bottom was the question I was asked. We talked a lot about the potential future past. So we're going to unpack all of those themes later in the show. Just talking about the schedule coming up, got some really good content. Tomorrow, we're actually going to do a, a quick segment on circuit breakers. This is something we've had a lot of questions on just with the, the halts that we've had in trading. We're recording, producing up a really good little segment, um, sort of explaining the history of circuit breakers, how they work and what you want to look for, how to deal with them now. Uh, on Monday, our next edition of Behind the Charts, our interview style show is going to feature a conversation with David Auerbach. He's the editor of the Daily Repeat, focuses on real estate, really interesting, uh, interesting uh, analyst. Then we have Rob Slimer from Fundstrat on the 24th. On the 25th, we have Pat Ceres, and we also have our uh, new special called Navigating a Bear Market. This is featuring... Uh, thoughts, commentary, expertise, insights from myself and many of my fellow stock charts contributors. We're excited to sort of share our experiences navigating this period, what tools you should have in front of you. You're not going to want to miss that show on March 25th. Let's get to our market recap. So I was mentioning uh, earlier to a, a colleague of mine, when I look at the sector returns and I see they're actually distributed between some sectors up and some sectors down, I'd almost forgotten what that looked like because we've had such this polarized market where sort of everything was up huge and then everything's down huge one day to the next. Here we actually have a market that seems to make sense finally in, in some small way, all right? Now forget the fact we're coming off of these bombed out levels and you have things like oil moving up 20, 25% in a day. All of that aside overall, it's actually been a relatively orderly uh, movement sector-wise today. We're gonna get back to that in a second, but just wanna point out the S&P finished up about half a percent just above 2,400, and again, last couple of days, we've come off of that 2,350 level. We're gonna look at that in, uh, in a moment. Really interesting theme today, though, in my opinion, is the fact that mid and small caps were actually up big. Now, you know, again, we, we can always speculate as to why, and I don't wanna to dig too much into the why on, on this type of show. I like to focus on the charts as much as possible, but I would assume, you know, companies that are gonna benefit from a big stimulus package coming out of Congress would certainly be more in the mid small cap space and the universe we are tending to look at. So I, I, I'm guessing that's uh, certainly been a part of that, but some interesting themes that have popped around uh, uh, all around the corner. Let's look at a chart of the S&P, the daily chart. Um, you know, so again, we have sort of this round, uh, round the, the bend move where we had this uptrend for over a year, uh, 13, 14 months. And then in a couple of weeks, we take, basically take all of those returns off the table Back down to that 2350 level, we've been talking about this level for a while. It lines up with a, a number of different places, but most meaningfully, this is the low from December 2018. And, and the fact that we've gone below it now two days in a row, but closed back above it, certainly seems to suggest that that has some 
uh, has some uh, legs or has some meaning, right? That level uh, market has memory. We remember that level uh, and, and, and at least some investors are not anticipating it going much lower than that. The bullish divergence, we talked about that earlier in the week. I would hesitate to draw too much on that only because I would argue we really haven't established a firm lower low in price yet because tomorrow could just as easily go to new lows and all of a sudden this divergence is still going to be in play and you're, you're sort of in falling knife mode. So until you get some sort of indication that the low is, in, uh, is, is established, I think we're still sort of in the downtrend, again, down about 30% off of the highs from uh, about four weeks ago. I mentioned the weekly returns. I just want to point out that as of the close here, if you look, this is uh, last Friday where we had the, uh, the big rise right into the close. Then this was Monday's open, gapping down pretty well. But then if you look at the last four days, we've essentially gone nowhere now since Monday's open to where we're at now. So even with all the volatility, the big up day on Tuesday, the big down days on Monday and Wednesday, and then today's bit of recovery, you know, overall directionally, it's sort of wait and see mode as much as it feels still very negative, which I, I get the idea. You know, from a pure trend perspective, the trend has been sideways for the last four days. I think that's worth paying attention to. We haven't really directionally pushed one way or the other now based on the last uh, week. That's not to say that there aren't plenty of movements around there. Energy is a big story today with the XLE up almost 7%. This is, uh, you know, oil. The USO is up about uh, 25%, I want to say 20%. Uh, and crude oil will, will be up in that in that range as well. Um, so that's certainly driving a lot of energy stocks higher. We mentioned yesterday in our segment on dividends, things like Exxon and Chevron, which are paying a dividend yield over 10% right now because the price has come down so much and they're paying a decent dividend. And that usually is not going to change. Either the company is going to pull back a dividend or the price is going to recover. And so far, it looks like the price is rallying to, to mute that yield a little bit. Consumer discretionary was second. There's a big gap down to consumer uh, up three and a half percent. On the downside, you had some of the traditional defense, things like Utes, consumer staples, both down uh, pretty significantly. And again, both in pretty decent relative shape, but one day uh, down uh, down a little more than uh, than normal. I would point out in this sort of environment, you have some dramatic moves when you look at the global ETFs, when you look at the industries. We refer to these in most of our shows. Um, Markets that are tied to the price of oil, understandably rallying pretty well today. So Russia, Brazil, sort of at the top of the list, up pretty meaningfully. Russia up uh, over 13% today, the RSX. Um, a number of markets that are down, it's, it's more Asian-oriented markets that have been hit the most today, uh, down 1% to 4%. But overall, the average uh, market uh, up pretty good, right, up, up uh, over, uh, over the zero level. In terms of industry groups, you had a number of industry groups that are coming off a of very beaten down level. So mortgage finance is one up 23% today, but that's coming off of a, you know, a huge down move over the last uh, couple of weeks. So let's not get too excited about that as having some legs to that up move, but it's certainly coming off of a, you know, a, a rebounding level. We usually think of that as more of a dead cat bounce, com something coming off of a very, very depressed level rallying uh, pretty good. You know, we had uh, David Auerbach this week talking about REITs, and it's interesting to see a couple of real estate groups actually recovering pretty well, again, from very beaten down uh, levels. Uh, automobiles and gambling, I thought interesting to note uh, in, the, uh, in, the, um, in the up list, uh, pretty good as well. On the downside, airlines continue to be hit, and even though there's been a lot of speculation about, uh, you know, supporting the airlines and, uh, and with some, some sort of stimulus package, the charts are certainly not suggesting there's anything to get excited about these stocks just yet. Um, certainly continue to be beaten down. And pharmaceuticals, which had actually been holding up pretty well on a relative level, um, actually continue to go lower along with drug retailers. So there's a bit of a reversion from some of the movements that we've seen up until um, today. A couple other really interesting charts to point out here. The chart of Chipotle uh, <laughs> turning very, very quickly. This is coming off of news with uh, Uber Eats. There's a, um, a, uh, an agreement signed with Chipotle, a nationwide uh, uh, making it easier for people to order uh, burritos over... <laughs> over Uber Eats, that pushed the stock up over 15% today. Again, this is sort of the falling knife story. And, and while this certainly could be the beginning of something bigger, the bottoms are incredibly difficult to predict and even more difficult to trade around. So, you know, I'd be looking in this sort of environment, if you miss this 15% gain, it's all about the next leg on a stock like this, in my opinion, right? Does the next leg go down and retest the lows? Or do you establish some sort of higher low sort of in this 475, 500 range? When that happens, that's when I would start getting a little more excited about uh, a chart like this. When it's in full, free fall mode, I, in general, I, I tend to want to avoid those types of things uh, and just wait to see uh, how things are playing out. 
I did also want to point out just in terms of the longer term trend, you know, when we're looking at breadth, I think what concerns me about the market, even with today, which felt almost normal again, uh, even though I think the new normal is increased volatility. We had a little less of that today. But for me, the cumulative advanced lines continuing to make lower lows. This is not updated for today. So I think with the mid and small caps, you'll see a bit of a bounce, but overall the trend is still going to be decidedly down. And we're seeing that across the board from large to mid to small. So until we see some sort of positive rotation, some sort of indication of accumulation with those breadth measures, I think they're still leaning more negative than positive. So I'd be, uh, you know, a little hesitant uh, to draw too, uh, too much into that. The last thing I wanted to point out was uh, during our YouTube live Q&A that we did uh, earlier today, we tried to do that every Thursday at 1.30 uh, p.m. Eastern. Uh, this is one of the charts we looked at. I think, again, the breadth picture is so interesting because it's trying to capture broad participation. And here we uh, we see still under 10% of the S&P above their 200 days. So 93%, 92% of S&P stocks are still below their 200 day until we see some sort of improvement there. Again, overall, the trend really negative. And these are bear market bounces that we're seeing. They're not the beginning of uh, of greater accumulation to the upside, sort of in my in my humble opinion. That's our market recap for today on a Thursday, a relatively muted market on a Thursday afternoon, even though you had things moving 20, 25% on average, stocks ended almost flat. And so it felt sort of uh, sort of normal again. It's kind of a nice change of pace. We need to move on to our next segment though, which is commodity corner. So based on the movements that I saw in, uh, in uh, some of those non-equity asset classes, I asked my producer if we could focus a little bit on commodities today. And so I wanted to just talk about a couple of different things. One, we're going to look at the broader commodity complex update on where it's been. Uh, we're also going to look at the dollar very quickly while technically not a commodity. Certainly when I'm thinking of asset allocation, I'm usually looking at the dollar related to some of these other uh, assets. Then we're going to focus on gold and oil and just see what movements we've, uh, we've seen because I think both oil and gold are at pretty key uh, points here. So the broader commodity complex, this is that candle glance uh, page that I tend to use to look at the different commodity oriented indexes and ETFs, and the three that I tend to pay attention to on the right here, the GSG, which is the GSCI uh, commodity index, the DBC, which is another broad commodity index, then the GCC, and sorry, I'm throwing a lot of tickers at you, but that is uh, one that uh, one of my mentors, Walter Diener, suggested we look at, and I thought that was a great idea, because the, the challenge with these three, and if you group the CRB in there as well, they tend to have a, a real big exposure to oil, so if oil does one thing, it's going to cause that entire ETF to fluctuate directly related to that. The GCC is a little more of an equal weighted uh, measure, so less widely followed, but definitely a better broad overview of what the sort of the average commodity is, uh, is doing. This is the Wisdom Tree Continuous Commodity uh, ETF. So what you're seeing here is it's coming off of an incredibly beaten down level. One of the consistent themes we've seen with commodities is uh, an oversold condition that's been consistent. So the GCC, for example, turned oversold for the first time in a long while at the end of January. So this is on that initial sell-off in commodities, broke down through that 61.8% level. And I remember bringing up the chart at this point is why the Fibonacci lines are still there. Cause that was sort of that last line in the sand. As long as we can hold that 1760, 1750 level, we're doing okay. And as you can see, the moment after we broke it, we reversed, bounced up a little bit, felt like this was actually maybe gonna hold up okay. But then when we finally broke down through it, it paused for a moment at the lows from last August, but then pretty much went in a free fall soon after that. So where are we at now? We're in this, continue to be in this uh, oversold level, but what's happened most recently, we've become extremely oversold. And that really is where it pushes into that sort of quote unquote falling knife characteristics where it's just accelerating to the downside. These are markets that are very difficult to buy into. You can do so with money that you have, you know, if you have a really high risk tolerance and a really low need for that capital, in the short term, it is totally fine to take a shot, but you know, you're really trying to uh, tempt the fates, trying to pick out the bottom while it's happening. I've always waited for some sort of confirmation. And what I think is interesting on the commodity index is now, and obviously oil bounced pretty well today. Uh, a lot of the commodities sort of, uh, sort of coming up. You can see that the GCC now back above 14, it was down below 13, almost down to 1350 yesterday. And this is a big move up. It's up about two, two and a half, three percent, which isn't huge relative to where it's come from but it's potentially a start. So I think the question for me after coming out of these lows, just like we talked about with, uh, with Chipotle, I think the question now is what's next? What's that next leg? It's not gonna do a V bottom uh, all the way back up to 19. That would be so highly unlikely. It's gonna do something next and it's that next pullback that I would be looking at. 
Does this continue the trend of lower highs and lower lows, or do we find some sort of, uh, of support? So for me, that close around 14, that's the level I'd be looking for if it can hold that on um, uh, next pullback. I feel a little better about commodities, but but not certainly not quite there, uh, not quite there yet. Wanted to look at the dollar very quickly, and again, if you're looking long term at the dollar, dollar sign USD is the best way to do it. During the day, uh, that that updates end of day for us. So during the day, UUP is an ETF which tracks uh, dollar pretty closely. If you look at the longer term trend, it's going to become disconnected because it's 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 constructed a little differently. But looking at the short term movements, they're going to parallel themselves uh, each other very very nicely. So. The UUP actually gapped up significantly. It was up huge this morning, but you can see almost got down into yesterday's range. It's been incredibly volatile over the last week and a half with uh, all of, uh, all of the, the movements that we've seen across different assets. But I thought overall still closing higher, so still up two and a third percent from where it was yesterday, but it had been up much higher earlier in the day, came back uh, a little bit lower. Overall, not quite overbought yet, so it's still actually in a pretty healthy range. And I think, again, the dollar is one of the few assets that's done pretty well in the last week, while most things have gotten hurt. The dollar has actually held up pretty well. And so for dollar sign USD, again, we don't have uh, today's uh, locked in there just yet, uh, but probably going to come down a little bit in that 102, 102 50, uh sort of level. Uh, and so that's, that's where you'd sort of be looking uh, going forward. Let's get to the next couple of commodities. I want to talk about oil. Then we talk about um, uh, gold. So what I usually do is look at the ETFs here, which is USO and GLV. Again, we have the uh, longer term history of the of, of crude oil, the, the commodity, and also uh, with the gold spot price, which you're welcome to uh, to look at as well. But the USO actually gapped up pretty, uh, pretty sorry, not a gap up, but, but rose very nicely. So the USO is actually up 14%. The crude oil uh, commodity is probably going to be up around 20, 25%. It's going to move up. Uh, pretty, pretty good. So based on how those two things map to one another, it's hard to find that 100%. That's going to be up in like that 24, 25 range would be my guess, uh, based on what we saw with the USO. Um, but this is coming out at a very depressed level. So crude oil hit 20 for the first time in, I don't even remember how long. And now today was a big rebound up. So um, this is going to change the characteristic of it a little bit. A lot of those energy stocks that have been so beaten down, Exxon, Chevron, and all the other uh, you know, EMP names and other things all bouncing pretty nice. That's why energy is the number one sector. But overall, again, I think this is it still feels a bit like a falling knife. You, we were looking for some sort of stability, some sort of indication of accumulation. I don't think we've seen that quite yet. We're going to finish off our commodity corners talking about gold. I think gold is a really interesting chart for two reasons, or maybe three reasons. Number one, we've pulled back significantly. So you think of gold traditionally as a safe haven. I talked with one of my guests earlier this week about that. Um, but it hasn't played out in the last week or two. You've seen gold come down along with stock. Now it's broken down through its 200-day moving average for the first time since the last market low back here in, uh, in December of 2018. But now we're testing support around 136, and this is 136.50. This is from the lows back here in November and December, which lined up with some previous resistance. It's a really key level. So now that we've broken the 200-day, I think we're at that next key level of support. And if it breaks down through about 135, that would confirm further downside. But I would note to wrap up here that even though gold has come down a lot, the relative strength has appreciated beautifully. So it's sold off, but not nearly as much as equities in other places. So still on a relative basis, pretty decent place to, to hide. But I'll be looking at some of those support levels here going forward. We need to take a quick commercial break. We're going to be back with my guest, Cliff Droke. We'll see you back here in a minute. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Dave Keller, here at StockCharts.com. Really appreciate all your questions coming to us. You can email us at the final bar at StockCharts.com. The best way to get your questions and your feedback to us. During the show, you can also just put a question in the Q&A panel. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have another mailbag segment. We'd love to answer some of your questions on the market, some technical analysis. Uh, no, nothing is out, of, uh, is, is out of bounds for that sort of uh, environment. I want to bring on my guest, Cliff Drow. Cliff is an equity research analyst with Cabot Wealth Network. And very selfishly, I am always thankful when I can bring someone on the show whose books I have on my bookshelf 
And Cliff, you uh, you uh, fulfill that requirement. So thanks for coming on the show, Cliff. My pleasure, Dave. Thank you for having me. So uh, I've enjoyed uh, reading some of your writing uh, for a number of years and was super excited to have you on. You sent some charts related to breadth, which I think is so key right now. First one was looking at the new highs, uh, new low ratio. What is this telling you? Well, this is telling me um, that the market could be near an inflection point short term. Uh, I think a lot of technicians are obviously looking for that, very closely scrutinizing it. But this tells me you can see the the slight upward divergence, which is important. It's one of the first ones we've seen, you know, since the panic began. And that's, you know, that's it. obviously the bottom is not confirmed yet in the stock market, but that is a good first sign. I always look at various indicators based on the new highs and lows because I consider that to be the single best measure of incremental demand for equity. So uh, the new highs, new lows are a wealth of information uh, in and of themselves. And this is just one way of looking at it. So I, I like the way this indicator is starting to shape up in the, in the near term. Very interesting. And, and, and you're, you're echoing what I've learned, I, I think, over my career, which is that you know, a lot of times inflection points will reflect themselves, I feel like, in the breadth reading before you'd, you'd even get a better sense of it on the broad chart, right? The breadth is what sort of indicates a rotation in some of the names underlying those indexes, right? Exactly, exactly. The chart number two was looking in particular at the new 52-week low. So how does that relate to your first chart? Well, this I, this has been the star, in my opinion, the star indicator uh, of the year. Um, I always look at the new the new lows at at uh, Cabot. We call it the um, the ten second indicator or the two second indicator because you look at it and you can instantly get a feel for what's happening below the market surface. And basically, any time you have more than forty stocks making new fifty two week lows on a daily basis over a period of like you know several days to weeks. It indicates that there is at least some measure of internal weakness in the market somewhere. In other words, there's at least one sector in the market that isn't doing well. And in this year, you know, year to date, that, that sector has clearly been energy. Anytime the new 52-week lows have gone above 40 per day, uh, and we've seen them now getting up close to 3,000 or, or at least above 2,000, uh, it's been pre predominantly energy stocks. Actually, in the past year, whenever we've seen big spikes in the new lows, they've been mainly energy stocks. And that has told us that, yes, the energy sector's got some major problems, evidently sniffing out deflation, which, you know, the threat is now obvious for everyone to see. But any time you see those new lows expand, it's trouble. Now, when they reach an extreme, as they have now, because we're now we're seeing them above 2,000, which you almost never see, except in times of serious crisis. I think the last time was 2008 that we've seen this many new lows. That is also instructive because it suggests we are very near the panic low. Uh, it would be very surprising if, if the panic persisted you know, much beyond this. Those are two really good charts, um, which I really appreciate, Cliff. I, we have a little uh, time for one more question, if that's okay. I'd love Absolutely. to think so. You know what? One of the great benefits I think to to people watching the show is someone like you. You've you've seen bull and bear cycles both, and you've been through this before. So, for investors that have not been through this before, what are you seeing now relative to some of those? You mentioned the you know the the new lows relative to the 0809 period. What are you seeing now relative to what you had seen before? How does that make you feel about sort of a bottoming process? Does this is this a you know do, does it feel V bottom like? Does it feel L bottom like? Is it you know, what, what sort of signs are you looking for? How does this relate to historical periods for you? Well, technically, we've already seen some uh, analogs to 2008. I, I mean, I don't need to, t I'm sure your listeners are aware of what's going on with the volatility index, the VIX, uh, reaching those comparable 2008 levels. Um, we've seen extremes in virtually every measure of sentiment, investor sentiment, and, and technical analysis. But really, for me, the key here is actually on the policy front. It's what is what are policymakers doing? Central banks, Washington, because the market hates uncertainty, and they've been looking for leadership from Washington. Like you know, the stimulus package, I think, was a step in the right direction. And mm -hmm. every major panic low that I have seen has normally been preceded by some sort of significant policy action, either from the Federal Reserve, from uh, you know the world's leading central banks, from you know fiscal policy from Washington itself. We're beginning to see that. And that to me tells me that there's light at the end of the tunnel. 
Cliff, these are very encouraging words. We might have to have you on the fo- on the on the show pretty regularly just to keep things light. I think, but um, well, thank I really you. appreciate your perspective and especially thinking about new highs, new lows. I you know I love bringing on a guest who you know where I take some notes about a chart that I should be looking at more, and I think you've done that for us uh, here today. Cliff Droak, thank you so so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Dave. That was Cliff Droke with the Cabot Wealth Network. Some fantastic talks about breadth. And again, I, if I can, you know, summarize his thoughts and you know, at the end there, uh, as well as he did, I think the the idea is this sort of bull and bear cycle. As much as this feels unique and as much as it feels crazy, there are characteristics about bear cycles that we can we can look at. And again, the more you can look at some of those previous sell offs and what characteristics, not just with the charts, but with you know, other macro factors, if you can find some sort of similarities, as we've talked a lot, you know, the market doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes. And if you can come up with some of those guideposts to help you navigate this, just try to get ahead of things uh, mentally, I think you're going to be in, a, in pretty good shape. Uh, great charts there. We need to wrap up our show, folks. I'm going go right to the three and three. So at the end of every show, three charts in three minutes. And if these are not on your radar yet, uh, I hope they are from here uh, from this point on. Chart number one is looking at the S&P breadth by cap tiers. We looked at this earlier in the market recap, and I just think it's such a great visualization. I I, um, I really like Cliff's chart about the new lows and the acceleration in new lows, and he's absolutely right. We are, we are at unprecedented levels, but not historically. There are times when we've had that many, and it's back to some of those major market bottoming periods. You know, for me, it's all about you know, trying to understand the historical reference, but also trying to have a fair assessment of where, where we're at right now. And for me, this is, if I had one chart that I would look at to try to gauge when a bottom has happened and to get some sort of confirmation, this might be one I'm looking at, which would, which would be looking for the cumulative advanced decline lines on some of these indexes to go meaningfully higher. During this downtrend, we've had some pretty big up moves uh, coming off of lows. But if you look, the trend has still been pretty consistently down uh, across the board. And looking for some stability, some sort of increase in those lines, I think would uh, would help a uh, big deal. Chart number two is the AAII survey. This is the American Association of Individual Investors. I didn't get to this uh, earlier in the show, so I'm glad I put it on here. This comes out every week. It's a weekly survey of the AAII members, individual investors. Are you bullish, bearish, or neutral on stocks? We show the bullish reading and the bearish reading and then the difference between the two. It just updated today, and I think it was interesting to note that the number of bears essentially was stable, just over 50%, 51.1% uh, saying they were bearish on stocks, but the number of bulls actually increased, which I thought was fascinating. So it went up from about you know 28 or 29% up to 34% uh, in, the last, uh, in the last week. So on this severe sell-off, you had people that are actually increasing uh, and, and voting a little more positive, which I was actually pleasantly surprised by. Um, you know, again, what's tough about this sort of environment is you don't know when people actually were pulling the trigger and voting. I feel like day to day, things can feel euphoric or desperate depending on what the headlines have been. But overall, it's netted out a little more positive than last week, which is uh, which is fascinating. And then finally, uh, chart of Boeing, ticker BA, if you're not familiar, um, you know, again, with a lot of these stocks that have sold off so aggressively, Boeing has had plenty of issues leading up to what's happened. This is a weekly chart, so we're looking a little more longer term, looking at the last 10 years here. But you can see the steep sell-off in the last month, right? This is from the market really uh, taking off. What's interesting is Boeing has hit that big round number of 100. It closed just below 100 today for the first time since 2016. And again, we're adjusting the data for dividends, so it's going to look a little different, but Overall, it's lining up pretty well with some of those lows from 2014, 2015, 2016. And when a stock hits the 100 level, that's when people start to scratch their head a little bit. So you have a stock that's extremely oversold, has been underperforming, and testing a key support level around 100. It's tempting to take a look at some of those stocks. And ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. I want to thank you so much for joining us on the final bar every weekday after the close to look at the, the charts. I want to thank my guest, Cliff Droke from the Cabot Wealth Network for joining us, sharing some thoughts on breadth. Please keep your questions, your feedback coming to us. The final bar at stockcharts.com is the best way to get them to us. For stockcharts.com in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a great night. 